Hi and welcome to episode 4 of Gertie and Me, my life with a sock knitting machine. In this episode I'm going to show you how to hang a hem on your sock that is a folded cuff instead of using a river. So if you don't have a ribbing attachment for your machine it's quite an easy cuff to use. Personally I really like the fit of the um, folded cuff. It's not too tight, um, it looks very clean and it keeps the integrity of the design or the patterning of the yarn really nicely too. So. If you've watched episode three and you're interested on in how to hang a hem rather than just making sock tubes, then this is the episode for you. Okay, so in the last episode, um, I'd hung my sock and started knitting just in a straight um, tube. If you wanted to hang a hem, you have to first decide how long you'd like the hem to be, um, or the cuff, and double that because we're going to double that over as we hang it. I prefer a 30 row. Um, hem which gives you around between an inch and a half and an inch and three quarters obviously depending on the weight of the yarn that you're using so at the moment I've cranked out 15 rows so I'm going to crank out another 15 before we start hanging the hem Okay, so I've finished my 30 rows, and what I'm going to do is remove the weights that are on the bottom of my sock. So you can see, this is how it is when it's tensioned, and when you let go, the material just pops back up for you. So I'm removing my weight and my buckle from the bottom of my sock, and I'm going to use my double-ended tool that I got with my machine. My double-ended tool looks like this. So on one side, if I can just get it to focus for you, on one side it's just like one of the needles on your actual machine but without the latch hook and on the other side it's just like a pointed, very sharp pointed edge and what I will do is use this part of the double ended hook just to lift some stitches and hang them on the needles and that's what I'm going to show you next. Okay, so I've just changed the angle of my camera just so that you can see what I'm doing here. And what we're going to be doing is hanging a hem. So we've knit 30 straight rows of the sock and now we want to hang the hem. So what you need to do is, first of all, you should always choose a contrast yarn, a contrast waist yarn that's in very high contrast to your working yarn. So here I've got a yellow and white and my waist yarn is the turquoise and what you need to do is find the first row of your working sock yarn. So for me, it's this row, just here. And you just pick up a loop from that row. It can be a bit tricky to see sometimes. If I can zoom in so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so I have a stitch from the first row just here. So you can see this white stitch is the first row of my working yarn here. And once you've got hold of that stitch, you need to follow the stitch up and find out which of the nearest needles it relates to. So I've followed it up and all that I need to do now is pull that stitch up. So I can zoom out now so you can see what I've done. So this needle here is lifted up so that I know to hook that yarn onto that needle and all I'm going to do with my double-ended tool and the side of the tool that looks like a needle without a latch hook I'm going to lift that up and pop that stitch over that needle now I know that it's on I can pop that needle back down and what you have to do from this point is find the first stitch of the row of your working yarn all the way round and then lift those stitches onto the needles. So I'm going to pick up my next stitch and now that I've got one stitch on I will rotate my, my double-ended tool around and just use the sharp pointed end. 
and I'm going to lift all of these stitches on. I have to apologise for the noise in the background. It's a really lovely sunny day and there's lots of lawn mowing going on around our house. So We are just lifting these stitches on. I'm just going to see if I can zoom in so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. Okay. Okay, so you can see the stitches here and I'm just taking the next part, the next stitch along, lifting that stitch out and over the next needle, which is actually very difficult to do when you're trying to watch yourself on a camera. Okay, so we're going to follow that all the way around, so I'm picking up the next stitch and obviously just like when we're hanging the hem. We can't hang a hem on stitches that are um, you, you can't actually get to. So there will be some stitches that are on a needle that's in a down position because it's near the yarn carrier. So we have to leave those until we've managed to crank out a couple of rows. So I'm just going to go round and I'm going to hang a stitch on each of the needles all of the way around on all of the needles that I'm able to. Okay so I've now hung those stitches on all of the needles that I can get to but if I just rotate the camera around just here slightly you'll be able to see that there's some stitches just behind the yarn carrier just here that are actually in the down position so I can't hang any yarn on those needles right now. So what I need to do is move my yarn carrier out of the way by by cranking the handle forward. At the moment you'll remember that we don't have any weights on the bottom of our sock giving us any tension. So what I tend to do is just hold on to the bottom of the cast on bonnet and pull down so that I'm getting some tension. You can see here that the gap where we haven't been able to hang that yarn is opening up. So I'm just going to crank forward until these needles pop up and I can get to them. So you can see now that these stitches are in the up position so I can let go of the cast on bonnet and now hang these remaining stitches. This is the most time consuming part for me of making the sock. But once it's done, you can fly through the rest. Okay, so if I just move the camera back again. So we're now going to start cranking forward again on the machine. We've hung our hem all the way round on all of the needles at the top just here. So what we can do now is we can actually pop our weights and our buckle back on. So here is the buckle. If you've watched episode, the previous episode, you will have seen this before. So this is the buckle that came with my machine. So I'm going to pop that on the bottom of my cast on bonnet and flip it the right way around so that it grips the sock. And then I'm going to hang my weights just here with a hook on the bottom of my buckle. So now you can see that there's tension once again on my sock. So that weight's back on. What I'm going to do with this sock is actually make a full sock, so I'm going to put a heel and a toe into it. What I tend to do is, um, I'm currently at 30 rows, I'll crank to 90. That gives me a, a length from the top of the cuff to the start of the heel of about five and a half to six inches. Usually more around the six than the five and a half, maybe even up to six and a quarter. The reason that I do that is that I then know that out of 100 grams, I can generally make a full pair of socks up to a men's size 12, for example. So if you did want a longer cuff, then um, or a longer leg, I should say, then obviously you can make it as long as you like. If you wanted to hand knit the heels and toes, you would basically just crank from this point on and do as many rows as you like, or even weigh your yarn to make sure that you're only using, say, 50% of the yarn, and then you can stop pop in some waist yarn and then start the whole cuff process again. So I'm going to crank forward another 60 rows. 
so that I have a 30 row um, leg length and then I'm going to start my heel. If you're interested in knowing how I do my heels then I'll be covering that in the next episode. So thanks for joining me. So now I'm going to crank forward for 30 rows, so that I uh, for 60 rows, sorry, so that I have a total of 90 rows um, for the leg, and then I'm going to pop in the heel. Um, if you're not interested in watching the heel, okay. So now I've hung my uh, cuff, and I've got 30 rows on my counter. I've actually got 32. I've just cranked a couple of rows past um, the cuff. The legs on my socks, I like to be. Uh, 90 rows so I'm going to crank forward to 90 rows on my um, counter and then I'm going to put a heel in this sock if you're interested in seeing how I do my heels then I'll cover that in the next episode so thanks for joining me